Normally I use Claude Code and Cursor together, but now I've decided to just kind of go with Cursor with the Cursor desktop app and Cursor CLI. Let's get into why. All right, so we're actually kind of in a cool position here because this computer that I'm actually recording on is not my laptop. My laptop is where I do most of my dev. So I haven't installed it here. So that's a good opportunity to try out the install. So I'm gonna copy the install command here for the cursor CLI. Jump on over my terminal, pop that in there. Now I've already got local bin, so I'm just gonna rehash. And now I should have cursor agent. I do. We'll sign in. And that's it. Okay. Now let's trust this workspace. And we're coding. So let's take a quick look around. The first thing we're going to try out is slash commands. Now you can see that we have slash model is the first one. I guess that's what most folks want to do out of slash. We'll try that slash model. And you can see the different models that we have available. So that right there is one key difference between this and Claude Code is that we've got more than just the Claude Sonnet model and the Claude Opus model. We've got GPT-5 as well as Grok. You're not going to get that from Claude Code. Now, personally, that actually doesn't matter all that much to me since I'm mostly on just Sonnet or Opus anyway. But I really do enjoy the integration of this with Cursor. So, for example, I can just do Open here and open up Cursor in that directory. Now let's try out something more sophisticated, for example, like MCP. So I'm going to go and create a new file here. In the dot cursor directory, I'm going to create mcp.json. And in there, I'm going to configure some MCP servers. I'm not sure why I came up with MCP gRPC. I'm going to configure it for TanStack. And I'm going to set up my personal favorite MCP server, which is create start app at latest with the MCP flag on, which allows us to create TanStack start apps. And it's also my MCP server. So, you know, a little bit of bias there. All right. Now, if we go over to MCP and list, no servers configured yet, but if I get out and then come back in, there we go. Approve all those servers. Now, if I do an MCP list, we can see that our Tanstack start server is ready. I can't see the tools from here, but I can see the tools if I go back out and actually try this on the command line. So let's check that out. So over here, we have our command line help. And from here, I can do MCP. Also help on that. You can see that we have MCP list. That should give us that same tan stack ready to go. And then we can list the tools on that tan stack. And that has our tools listing the tan stack add-ons. So that'd be like tan stack query and all that fun stuff. And then creating a tan stack start application. So let's give it a try. Let's build an application, hack out a little bit, to show you how cool this cursor agent is. So I've got to create a TanStack application that also has TanStack query configured. It'll prompt us to use those MCP tools. And it looks good, but it also did a little bit of overkill that actually went through and kind of took a look at the whole application. And so it took up about 2% of its whole context window to do all that, but we're all set up and good to go. From here, we can use the shell command, run it. All right, that's running in the background now. Let's hit it up. And there we go. Cool. Now we can do our fun AI vibe coding, like, for example, change the home page to be a tic-tac-toe game. You can also specify a specific file if you want to be really specific about, it. for example, source routes. Index would be the home page route, although it would have found that anyway. I'm just showing you the context for files. All right, it's made its edit to that route. We can do control R if we want to go and inspect the files that it's edited. In this case, it's just edit the one source routes index. Let's take a look. Oh, I guess we've lost our PMPM dev. Let's run that again. And wow, actually that that's a good one. I you know, I run this a lot and sometimes it's pretty janky looking and other times it looks really good and this time it looks really good. So, yay, I win. I win against myself. Yay. Another important thing you can do is switch between the different modes. So I'm using shift tab here to shift between auto running all commands, the plan mode. So that's going to plan everything, give you a full and complete explanation of whatever it's going to do before it does it. And then you can go and do it or just the current generative mode that we're in. 
But if you've never used one of these CLI coding tools before, you might be asking yourself, well, hey, why am I not just using these chats over here? And well, that's true. I got to say, in a lot of cases, yeah, it's essentially identical functionality. But there are some things you can do with CLI that you can't do with the desktop app. In particular, like run prompts right off the command line. So let's take a look at our help again. And we can see right at the top here, you can give it options, commands, and a prompt. So let's give it a prompt to check in the current state. Let's see if it infers that I'm talking about Git. Let's do all that. This is a whole lot more than I would have done, tell you what. <laughs> all right, so it's got a nice message in there. Again, probably a whole lot more than I would have done. But let's have it make a small change and then try that again without making it interactive. Let's have it change the background of the homepage to a rainbow swirl. Again, we can do Control R to review the changes. Now it's actually done two files, so you can go left and right to switch the files. In this case, you've got the styles as well as the index. Looks good. Let's check it out. <laughs> ah, that's great. Can I do it? Ah, yes. No. No. Oh my gosh. That that's awesome. Can you play this game this way? I don't know. That's awesome. All right. Now let's use it to go and create commit message with the non-interactive prompt. So again, we'll do help, but let's check out that we want, in this case, print. So it's gonna to print to the console, and we also wanna look for the output format because the output format by default is stream JSON, which is going to just give us back a stream of JSON blobs, which we're not really gonna be able to see as a human. So let's do this. So here we're gonna check in those changes with an informative commit message. We're also gonna print it. So we're not gonna go interactive, we're gonna get the output format as text, and we're also gonna force it so that it's not gonna deny any commands. Let's give it a try. All right, so it picked up the rainbow swirl. It did a good commit message. And there we go, and theoretically you could get this into CICD. I personally probably wouldn't do this. If I was looking for this kind of thing, I might be doing like a commit hook around updating the readme based on some changes that I put in. So personally, this compares really well to Claude code for me. Basically, it's everything that I want from it. So the integration with Cursor basically pushes it over the edge for me. I will say that there are a bunch of glitches in here. This is beta software. For example, global MCP definition didn't work for me. I had to do control C at the end of the last command, which is probably not great if you're gonna use it in a CI CD context, but I expect that a lot of those glitches are gonna get worked out by the time this goes into release. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments about Cursor CLI or Claude Code, or you want to try and convince me to go back to Claude Code, drop that in the comments right down below. And if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. And you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.